So today, I'm going to show you how to use an object value to reference instances, which is anything you can make in Roblox, like a part or a script. So we're going to start by making a part. So you can do many things with this part. You can change a bunch of its properties. So we're going to use a script in server script service to do that. We're going to make a script here. So in this script, we're going to use the basic normal referencing that you can do in Roblox Studio. So part equals a game dot workspace dot part. Now this works when you want to change, like let's say the part transparency equals. So let's make it half transparent. So if I run this. Works pretty well. Parts half transparent. But let's say I wanted to put this part inside of a model or a folder or some other part, just for like organization or organization. So if I do that, the path over here is different. So if I play this, it has an error because it's not a valid member of workspace. So I have to go in and change this to game dot workspace dot model dot part. Now it'll work. But with multiple parts and scripts in your game, it'll get very confusing very quickly if you want to organize something or a lot of things at the same time. So what you can do is use object value. Okay, so an object value is a value that can store any object, like it says, and its value property. So it's in the same family as an int value or a string value. So I can click on the, this little value bar here, and you can see I have the block with a up arrow on it. So that means I can, whatever I click here, gets attached to this. So if I click on this part, see, this value, which is a part. So it's this part object, not just its name. So this is very powerful when combined with normal scripting because this object value stays persistent regardless of where this part is. So I can put this part in the workspace. It's still attached. I can even go so far as to put it in server storage and it's still attached to this object value. So what this means is this can make our scripting life so much easier. So if I want to reference this object value, I can just go to replicate storage, service, replicated storage. And the reason I have this in replicated storage is so both the server and the client can access that. I go to value equals replicated storage dot value and for this video's purposes we're going to change this name to part just so it's less confusing part and when we want to reference what this value is holding then we have to go to Local part equals value dot value. So what this is doing is finding it finds the object value, and then it finds which property we're asking for the value property, and it gives us the part. So what we can do now is if I play it, it'll do the exact same thing. Oh, I have a syntax error. Service spell it correctly, unlike me. So if I play this. You can see this part is half transparent. So yeah, it's the same thing that we did. So what's the what's the catch? What what does it do? So what I can do now is I can put this part in the model. It's in a different spot. If I run it, it'll do the exact same thing. And I can even put it in server storage. I mean, obviously we won't be able to see it, but if I go to server storage you can see as half transparency 
So this allows me to set an object value connected to a part once, and I can move that part wherever I want. So this is really good if you're making a beta or alpha for a game, and then later as it gets more and more complex, you need to organize things more and more. So what I usually do is in my replicated storage, I have a folder called References. And then I access it by doing references replicated storage dot references. And I can access the value from there by doing references dot part. I have to move the part into there. And you can multiply these. So let's say I wanted one for the workspace. You just do this, or the base plate, I mean. So you have the base plate, and so this should this will work the same way. So I can go local base plate equals references dot base plate dot value, and don't forget this value dot value because if you leave this out. The script will think you're talking about the object value itself, not the value that it's holding. So if you want to change the transparency of a value, it'll never work because it thinks it's just like it's holding something. So if I do this, base plate dot transparency, it'll do the exact same thing. And so yeah, I use this in all of my games. It's very, very useful, very powerful tool. And this is basically the equivalent of other game engines, such as Unity, where you can access stuff in the same way with your scripts. So, yep, that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something.